How's it going everyone? It's Sam. We are at a critical point right now for cryptocurrency. We have seen some red here today. There's a lot of fear in the market. I want to talk about why that is, but also talk about some good news and just some updates for who's really piling into crypto right now. So if you guys don't mind hitting the like button and subscribe button, I appreciate that. There are timestamps underneath the video, so you guys can skip around. I would suggest staying through to the end though. So right now, the crypto market is kind of red. We were around $44,000 just a day or two ago. Now we're around 42. There are a couple of different reasons for that, but this is a very critical level, which we will talk about here in a moment. So a lot of these altcoins are down pretty significantly, and many of them right around how much Bitcoin is down because Bitcoin usually leads and then other things bleed into it after it's already fallen down or they come up after Bitcoin's already moved up. So real quick, a couple ways to make money with the links underneath the video. Unstoppable Domains is giving away $25,000, $500 at a time. There is a link to their website underneath the video. And then you can also go follow their Twitter where you can start getting some of this free money if you buy a domain with the link underneath the video to Unstoppable Domains and then put it as your Twitter name and then add ETH address to the domain and then tweet something daily. So definitely check that out underneath the video. There's also some news for BlockFi clients outside of the US. So they're actually adding six new cryptocurrencies, including Solana, Avalanche, Polkadot, Cardano, Cosmos, and Filecoin. So you guys can check that out. This is for clients outside the US. If you guys want, there is a link to that underneath the video. If you're inside the US, you can still sign up. You just don't have access to these cryptos and you get $250, up to $250 when you sign up and deposit. So right now there are a couple things at play. So first of all, Bitcoin briefly dipped below 43,000. At least that's what it said three hours ago. Now it's actually well below uh, 43,000 as rate hike soon appropriate. So this is coming from the FOMC. We hit on this for a little bit yesterday, so I'll keep it brief here. But in support of these goals, the committee decided to keep the target federal funds rate from zero to point or to one fourth percent with inflation well above the 2% in a strong labor market. The committee soon expects it appropriate to raise the target range for the federal funds rate. So we already expected them to raise rates here soon in March. They also will halt asset purchases because they are still buying about 30 billion. Now, I think it is gonna be important to watch. A lot of people that think we're gonna raise about 0.5%, if we do that in March, I think that's pretty much what people expect. If it's more than 0.5%, it will be pretty bearish. If it's less than 0.5%, I think it'll be kind of bullish. Now, there's also some news of uh, the Ukraine, which is not good, but there are some news, or some people saying that there's news of mortars being fired between Russia and Ukraine. So I have not heard this confirmed, but I have heard people saying that there are actually more troops showing up from Russia on the Ukraine border. A lot of people are expecting them to, to start invading right after the Olympics is done, which is February 21, I believe. So a lot of people think there's going to be another war or an invasion here very soon. So that's causing more fear in the market. If we look at the equities market, it's also down pretty significantly here today. Now, I think this is a very critical level and a lot of other people do too, because we are holding 42,000 as support. And if we break below it, that's gonna be bearish. If we can stay above $40,000, then it's okay, but we'd really like to stay above this 42,000 mark and then push back up. A lot of people are also saying that this is really bullish if we hold this 42,000. This trader says, and people are telling me that we aren't bottom out. This is almost a more bullish move than the last time we went from 30,000 to 60,000, double bottom, very sharp V spike. Price action is just noise and people are listening too much to crypto Twitter. Another person says, strong moves up, shallow pullbacks, continuation. As long as 42,000 holds LTF, wave structure indicates we are likely to start pushing up. So a lot of people are bullish if we hold this 42 level. I think it will be interesting to watch. Honestly, Bitcoin's held up pretty well compared to the general markets. It has stayed right around 42,000 to 44,000 for the last week or two compared to the overall crypto market, which is actually really far down on the last on the last 30 day. And then also compared to the equities market. You might be asking, why does this matter so much what's happening in the world? Because there's still a lot of adoption happening in crypto. Part of that is because institutional money is the one that is piling into crypto right now. So a lot of us have bought in retail, but institutional money accounts for the majority of crypto trading right now. And this shows the number of 13 F SEC filings mentioning Bitcoin by quarter. You see that it's exploded. If you don't know what the 13 F SEC filing is, 
It is a quarterly report that is required to be filled by all institutional investment managers with at least $100 million in assets under management. It discloses their equity holdings and can provide insights into what smart money is doing in the market. So a lot of these large companies are now talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So we've known that for a while that institutional players were coming, but now you can really see the numbers. And then we, we know one person that's not buying crypto, and that is Charlie Munger. Uh, it's interesting because he says just yesterday that the dollar is going to zero over the next 100 years because of inflation. But he is also uh, very proud of the fact that he did not invest in crypto. He thinks it's like a venereal disease. He says, I wish it would be banned immediately. I admire the Chinese for banning it. I think they were right and we were wrong to allow it. He says that it's like rat poison squared and says that it's nothing more than a delusion that attracts charlatans. Now, this is coming right after they increased exposure to a bank that offers cryptocurrency investments. So they put a billion dollars and a lot of the other banks that they're invested in also allow cryptocurrencies. So this is kind of an interesting thing happening, but uh, they, they do point out some of the things that happened when Charlie Munger was born, just citing the fact that he is very old and old school. I think it will be interesting too. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger aren't gonna be around forever. So what do the people underneath them invest in, right? They have a ton of cash sitting on their balance sheet. They have a ton of investments. Will they lean more towards crypto? I would think a little bit, right? I mean, you can't be more on the other side of crypto than Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett at this point. We do have some cool mining news too. A lot of people cite mining or cite the electricity issues as the main issue or the environmental issues as the main thing wrong with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Oil giant ConocoPhillips reduces gas flaring emissions via Bitcoin mining. So there was some news on this, but some of it was displayed incorrectly. So some people were saying that ConocoPhillips is now mining Bitcoin, which isn't true. But what they're doing is instead of burning excess gas, they are actually using the byproduct known as flaring, and they're selling it to a third party Bitcoin miner to be used as fuel. So this is something that's really bad for the environment. It happens when mining companies accidentally hit natural gas formations while drilling for oil. So if the miners strike gas at any significant distance from a pipeline, companies are forced to burn it or flare the gas, which is ultimately an unprofitable and environmentally harmful procedure. So instead, they're going to make this uh, available to these Bitcoin miners. Bitcoin miners place shipping containers or trailers filled with crypto mining equipment near an oil well and divert the gas into the generators which power the equipment. Pretty cool. So they're going to take advantage of this. And there's already one company, Crusoe Energy, that has been taking advantage and uh, they have about 60 data centers and Bitcoin mining units being powered by direct, diverted natural gas from their oil fields. This is going to help in, uh, help decrease CO2 emissions by as much as 63% when compared to regular routine flaring. Pretty cool, right? That actually is something that's a pro to Bitcoin mining and people can't complain about that. And then we have a Mexican billionaire saying that he's eyeing Bitcoin mining with geothermal energy. This is another big piece of news. We know that El Salvador is planning on doing something really similar. So supposedly they have enough energy to power about 6,000 to 8,000 Bitcoin mining rigs. And that means that they would save about $40,000 a day in, in energy costs. So that's a huge amount of money when you compile that over 365 days. Then we also got news that Russia is pushing to legalize Bitcoin mining in some areas here soon also. So there's a lot of good news on the Bitcoin mining front. It really uses wasted energy or energy in places that normally wouldn't have energy being used. The lower the cost, of the energy, the more likely Bitcoin miners are to go there. So they will go build in the middle of nowhere if they can get cheap energy, which is something very cool and they can use renewable energy. So I think this is actually not as bad as a lot of people think. And yes, it uses a lot of energy, but it's being used in areas that aren't highly populated a lot of the time. No one's going to New York to set up a bunch of Bitcoin miners and pay a significant amount for energy. So I think this is overall overblown in the media. So overall, we have to hold 42,000. If we don't hold that, 40,000 is the next support. And then below that, probably 38,000 and so on. So we wanna stay around this level and then bounce back off of it if we can. So I wanna hear your thoughts on all this underneath the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one, bye.